Good morning. Um, so my name is Martin Jenkins. My role is Head of Academic Development at Coventry University. Um, the work I'm talking about is work that I've been doing with Tom Cochran from Auckland University of Technology in New Zealand. Tom, unfortunately, couldn't make it. Um, but for those of you who know Tom, how keen he is, he has sent through some video. So I've weaved some video of Tom contributing to the presentation as part of this um, session. Um, before I start, there is a, a link there, the tiny URL, which has linked to a sort of Google Drive, which has got some resources relevant to this presentation. Some of the things we're actually looking for feedback on um, as well. So there's copies of the slides, there's co copies of full, Tom's full sort of video. Um, so please use that. I've also sent it around on, on the Twitter feed as well, so the link is sort of easily accessible. Um, so the tiny URL and sort of then it's Y492XR8J, so that will be useful to actually look at. So having done my introduction, I'm now going to sort of allow Tom to do his introduction. Kia ora and welcome to our presentation for Alt-C 2019. We're looking at mapping professional accreditation pathways in higher education. My name is Thomas Cochran. I'm an academic advisor and senior lecturer in e-learning and learning technologies at Auckland University of Technology in New Zealand. And I'm part of our Centre for Learning and Teaching. And alongside Martin Jenkins from Coventry University and the Academic Development Unit, we're looking at the current state of the art of accreditation for teaching and learning in higher education, and in particular, uh, the mapping or the overlap between two main frameworks, which are the HEA Fellowship, or Advanced HE Fellowship, and CMOT, the Certified Member of the Association for Learning Technology. And uh, we're doing this by um, looking at the current literature. We're doing a systematic uh, literature review to see what people have uh, published on this already, and to see what the gaps are, to uh, do a bit of analysis, and um, see if there's a way of providing a bit more of a closer mapping between the two, particularly for people who want to uh, uh, explore getting CMOD accreditation, who already have HEA fellowship, or vice versa. So as part of this process, we're uh, doing a systematic review through the Campbell Library. Now, the Campbell Library has a very set process for doing this. It's a very uh, structured systematic review process. I should pause it there because that should have stopped. Um, so Tom introduced the sort of three main sort of strands of what we're going to do in terms of the systematic review, um, the mapping work, and also makes reference to the, the CMOC, CMOC, which I shall come to. And these are the sort of key questions that we've sort of come up with for part of the work. Now, the background to this comes from a conversation that Tom and I had following the results of the, the most recent USIZE of Technology Enhanced Learning survey, and a heads up that that will be being repeated again next year. And the, through that survey, it highlighted again how we're not yet getting the full potential of learning technologies within the sector. And the, I've highlighted the need for more professional development activity within the sector as a whole, which reinforces some of the points that Sue raised yesterday in her keenery and Jesse this morning. Um, as well, that we need that sort of more critical sort of analysis of technologies and how we're actually using them. And that led Tom and I on to sort of a conversation about the use of frameworks such as the, the UK PSF and the HEA accreditation and the role of CMOL and what impact they were actually having on practice. So we recognise that the these frameworks have, have been beneficial in terms of actually sort of setting standards, um, sort of that professionalisation, again, something that Melissa mentioned when, in the opening of the sort of conference yesterday, um, and also used in sort of progression pathways now. So they bring very much sort of some personal benefits to those who are actually engaged in going through the accreditation process in terms of encouraging sort of the conversations, the confidence that comes from the sort of the peer recognition, but what's the evidence of actually of those, of the engagement actually on sort of practice. So that's the sort of why we're doing the sort of the systematic analysis to actually sort of see what the literature says about that 
Um, and at the moment, let's say the indications are that that's potentially sort of the evidence is not quite there um, in that respect. So, so I'll go back to Tom, who will explain a little bit more about that systematic review. Thank you all, and welcome to our presentation oh. for Alt C 2019. Apologies for this. The testing of the thing not worked. As part of this process, <coughs> we're uh, doing a systematic review through the Campbell Library. Now, the Campbell Library has a very set process for doing this. It's a very uh, structured systematic review process, and we, we're in the process of doing that. We haven't finished yet, but um, some interesting things are coming out of that systematic review. So as part of that process, you, we do a title registration, uh, we do a protocol, the review protocol looks at the, um, the review criteria that we're looking at, the databases that we're searching, the keywords that we're using, and does it in a reproducible way. So, so far we've looked at uh, Scopus, Web of Science, ERIC, and Google Scholar looking with various keywords around higher education, professional development, mapping, and the scholarship of teaching and learning. And thus far, there's, there's certainly a gap in the literature. There's a gap around, particularly around CMOLD accreditation. Uh, there's a gap around the impact uh, of accreditation frameworks. And there's, there's, there's really nothing at the moment that looks at mapping uh, these different accreditation pathways. So we think this might be of interest to people to, to uh, look at and see what some of the ways of perhaps cross-pollinating between the two frameworks and uh, some of the issues around uh, the impact and professional development uh, of these accreditation pathways. So Martin will t t talk you through a little bit more about... So we started the systematic analysis um, the flow diagram here sort of represents sort of where we're at at the moment. So Tom sort of highlighted the databases that we've actually sort of made use of and identified sort of a couple of thousand sort of potential references which have been screened down and then sort of filtered further. Um, and there's sort of like 36 sort of items that have been sort of particularly sort of highlighted. And again, there's a list of those in the Google folder if people are actually interested. Um, and one of the reasons for doing this sort of systematic analysis is that it's there as something that can be sort of replicable. So if people are interested, they can also be repeating exactly the same sort of the research that we're actually doing at the moment. So the work that Tom and I are doing now is to actually go through that and then we'll say we'll be hoping to sort of publish the outcomes for that analysis. The next element um, that we've sort of referenced yesterday is the mapping of the CMALT and the UK PSF. And those of you who know Tom will be aware of how sort of passionate he is about the um, CMALT um, sort of generally and sort of pushing that. But the issue that, again, as part of our conversation that we were conscious of is that in both of our cases, and we don't think we're unique in this, is that how our institutions put much more emphasis on getting HEA accreditation. Um, but again, recognising the things that have been said at this conference about encouraging more professional development and getting more people to be sort of more digital champions and sort of being critical around sort of the pedagogy is about how can we perhaps encourage more people down the CMALT route. Now, we're aware that there's been mapping done by ALT of the UK PSF to the CMALT, but that's a fairly high level and maps the actual dimensions of the UK PSF against the core areas of CMALT. And we were thinking, perhaps, could we do something that's perhaps a little bit more practical that might help people with that sort of translation? Now, this is where we need your feedback. So the approach we've taken is to look at some evidence that people have used as part of HEA applications, and then just to sort of list those against the core areas on the CMALT with an indication of which dimension they've been used in the, the, the HTA application. So it's giving people more practical examples of what evidence could be used and how it sort of relates and they could sort of cross-populate um, in that respect. And I'll say, this is just a screenshot of the table. The full table is available on the Google Docs. So please have a look at it. Give us your feedback. Um, is it useful? Um, have you got any other ideas that, or examples that would actually help um, enhance this as well? Um, we're always happy to receive that. 
So that's the sort of process, and I say that we really need sort of feedback now as to sort of whether this is actually practicable and useful um, as a sort of a way forward. The third element um, as part of what we're doing, and this is building on work that Tom has been doing for a number of years now, is providing that support structures for people through the CMOC process. Now, Tom's been running this CMOC, CMOOC, this online sort of network, and he's very keen to make that sort of an international collaboration. We've had, we've had one member of staff from Coventry um, go through the process. That's Liz, who's actually is now deserted us for the University of Highlands and Islands, um, who actually sort of was a participant in this network to help her get her CMOC um, accreditation. Um, the next iteration of this support network is running again starting you know, on sort of the 20th of September um, and so Tom will be it's really keen for people to participate in that and open that as a network I say it's not a, a sort of how to um, in terms of completing the CMOL it's there very much as that sort of sharing network so again picking up points that Sue was raising yesterday the importance of that sort of sharing and collaboration um, in what we actually do now, Tom is going to talk about this. I'm hoping this, this may jump to the beginning again. Kia ora. ...is a structured framework for supporting CMOL accreditation. So HEA Fellowship has, uh, has a very structured uh, support network, very, very structured support uh, across uh, the UK, Australia, and, and increasingly in New Zealand. But there's been very little structured support for CMOL accreditation. So what we've developed is a CMOOC, a Connectivist MOOC. And uh, we've run this four times already. We're about to start the fifth iteration of this. And we'd be really keen for people to join us in this journey, join this community of practice effectively, a network of like-minded people wanting to explore issues around um, learning technologies, and at the same time looking at the potential of creating an e-portfolio for CMOLT accreditation. So we run a weekly webinar. Uh, we have a course hub for this. So it's on WordPress. So it's CMOLT, CMOOC, one word, dot wordpress.com. There's a sign-up page there if you're interested in joining us. We're aiming to kick off our next iteration on the 20th of September. So only a couple of weeks after the conference, uh, we're going to have an initial webinar uh, which will introduce the CMOOC and uh, hopefully Martin will be able to join us for that. And then each week we'll have a weekly webinar discussing the week's activities, the, the issues around different parts of the portfolio and what it means and also uh, create this international network. So the final thing to mention linked to this, which is something that Tom's asked to push, is they are also developing through AUT are these SOTL, so the Scholarship of Technology Enhanced Learning, which is a term that's come out of work that Tom has been doing, the sort of research network clusters. There are a number of those um, that he's keen to sort of get people involved in, and linked to that also they have a symposium in February. And again, details of those are there, and again, links within this sort of presentation. And so so you can follow up on those if you're actually sort of interested. So that's the sort of the overview. I say very much sort of work in progress that we're doing at the moment um, around those three strands of actually doing the systematic analysis of the impact of the accreditation frameworks, um, starting to do some mapping to see whether there's sort of adds practical value to encourage that sort of, sort of linkages between the UK PSF and, and CMOLT and that greater engagement in professional development activity linked to, to technology and enhanced learning. Um, and then there's also there's a practical support network that's sort of being developed. Um, the links to a lot of the resources mentioned, I say in the presentation, up on the sort of the Google Doc. Um, and I say we do welcome your feedback, so contact Tom or myself um, and sort of really, really, really do want to hear from you. So thank you very much.
Edina's work with learning technologists helps to develop skilled, data literate students who can change our world for the better. Teachers and students can develop and share coding skills with multiple, our Jupyter Notebook servers. Our Digimap services deliver high quality mapping data for all stages of education. Future developments include a text and data mining service, working with satellite data and machine learning, and smart campus technology.